Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and today in this video we are going to talk about ARIA or ARIA and how playwright making use of it. So if you really not heard about ARIA, ARIA or ARIA stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. It is a set of attributes that can be added to HTML elements to make web application or web content more accessible to people with disabilities particularly those who use assistive technologies such as screen readers. So if you remember, most of the time we as a tester always have problem to perform accessibility testing. And most of the time, the only accessibility testing that we used to do is going to be on the keyboard navigation or is it really working with certain accessible specific components like pressing the space bar stops the video and double clicking it maximize the video something like that but we don't really do a lot of accessibility testing because the limitations of the tools as well as the technology available and that's the reason why aria or accessible rich internet application came into picture way long while html5 was actually created and aria can improve the accessibility of dynamic content such as menus tabs model dialogues by providing additional information to, to assistive technology users so there are three main features of ARIA itself. One is the role, second one is the properties, and third one is the states or value. And if you want to know about the roles, the ARIA or Accessible Rich Internet Application roles are a way to define specific roles of an element in a web application which can enhance the accessibility for user with disabilities. And ARIA roles include things like button, link, checkbox, and menus. And that's how the ARIA plays a key role really. By using these roles, web application can ensure that users with assistive technology such as screen readers can easily navigate and interact with the contents on this page. And that is the power of this ARIA role. And if you wanted to see how this ARIA role is gonna look like, it is gonna look something like this. And it is already defined in the W3C itself. So if you just go to the W3.org website, you will notice that there are many different roles available. And I have taken a small screenshot of it, but there are a lot of wide range of lists available for the ARIA roles itself. And similarly, the ARIA properties are gonna look something like this. And as you can see, it has the ARIA atomic, busy, controls, drop effect, flow to something like that. So this is not only the uh, properties but it is also including the states really so you can see there are so many different states available well as that said in order to see a quick example of how the area is going to look like really the example is going to look something like this the code is going to include an area labeled by is equal to dino labeled and you can see that for this particular dino label we are going to create an id and then we're going to set a value and you can see on the tooltip this is going to display something like this so this is how the extension of the aria is going to come up and this is where it is going to be helpful for the screen readers and other very specific softwares well as that said the next question naturally comes in is how can we test if our application really has the accessibility specific components in place for example aria well, you can see that the Chrome DevTool already supports the accessibility tab in their Chrome DevTool for quite a long time already. And you can see that there are going to be the area labeled by, area label, title, and based upon the different component, a particular button or a div or a heading is going to support. It's going to have different computer properties over there. And as I said, how about this we can test in playwright and why are we really bringing in playwright with the aria itself so if i work with playwright you might have already heard the support of playwright with the area components like get by role something like that and this support is already added in playwright 1.27 itself it's been quite a long time already and you can see that in version 1.27 they have already added the support for ARIA roles, attributes, and accessible names, and also all the different roles that is something that we're talking about. Well, as that said, we can actually dissect how this get by text is gonna identify which components in the documentation itself. And I have just taken a few clips or screenshot of them to show how it's gonna look like. As you can see over here, the get by label is going to identify a control using label or aria labeled by or aria label so if your application don't have this aria labeled by or aria label it is going to take the label itself and then it's going to identify that particular component 
and you can see this is how it is going to look like i'm sure that most of our application is going to have at least the input id is called the password input and this is the one not these two for sure in that case you are going to see the playwright is going to support how it's going to identify the label similarly get by text is going to support even if you have the do of hello do something like that the get back text is going to work and similarly get by placeholder is also going to work based upon the placeholder value which has been defined within your control and now that you have got a bit of hold about how the playwright locator with aria is going to work with if you see our existing code that we have written within our playwright series in our past videos as well as the code which is available in the github you can see that we can replace our existing code using the locator method all the way to the new locator strategy something like this and as you can see over here all i'm going to do is i'm going to be defining a get by role method and then in the get by role i'm going to define the area role which is going to be a link because the login is basically a link here and then it is going to be a name that we are going to be defining just a login link here similarly if i want to identify a username and if it is a text box it doesn't really have any of the label there but it's going to automatically match the label which is associated with that particular text box so it's going to take that particular label and then going to identify this particular text box itself similarly for the password here which is really really cool and right now we don't really have to go with the css selector or xpass selector or something like that because everything is going to come into this particular way of identifying the control it is really awesome and nice intuitive way of doing it well as i said let's try to dissect this particular locator a bit and understand it even further and how beautiful it is really and as you can see the get by role method is going to have two most important component within this identification the one is that it is going to tell you what aria role types they are is it a link type or it's a button type or it's a cell or it can be a row or a column whatever it is you can define anything over here so there are a lot of different enum properties available and as i said these are all going to be the area role that we just saw in the screenshot before so all these details are going to be coming up from here and then comes the actual locator itself and while it comes then we know that this particular locator is a link type and it can be identified using its name something like this i mean we can keep on so if you have understood all these theoretical concepts so far then let's discuss how this particular code is going to look like in an actual working environment in our rider ide so this is the same code that we actually worked with in our excel automation slash uh, playwright.net repo over here and it is currently updated with the latest version of dotnet 7 uh, code as well as the latest version of playwright itself so if you just press f4 you will notice that it is using the latest version of playwright which is 1.32 over here all the way from 1.21 so we have completely upgraded our code from the pretty oldest version and all the project in the solution is already been updated well as it said we are going to see how that we can use the latest and the greatest version of these locators so in order to do that the first code that we are going to change is this code as you can see over here and as you can see we are locating this particular uh, locator which is the login link using the page dot locator well we can actually locate this particular locator in an even more better fashion using what is called as the role that we just saw so all i have to do is i just have to replace this code so dot and you can see that there is something called as get by role method so this is a new method just added in version 1.27 and you can see that there are some information available like how we can really use this particular role i'm just gonna choose the get by role method and here i need to pass the area roles so you can see that the area role has got a lot of different roles which is supported by the documentation of w3c so you can see that it is supporting quite a lot of different properties all the way until here and just don't worry about the rest of the properties but yeah this is what it is right so we can choose the area role dot and then i can specify link over here and i can then specify the new page get by role option for this i'm just going to specify new and then i can specify the way that i can identify this particular control so you can see that over here there are again a lot of different properties going to come up one is the checked disabled exact name expanded level pressed 
selected include hidden name regex name string it's quite a lot right even the name itself is selected using the name name regex and name string but the one which we are going to be choosing is going to be the much much easier one which is the name is equal to login that's it you don't really have to define the role there but yeah this is quite an easiest option that we can choose but you can actually perform other option as well like if it is a uh, hidden button then you can specify include hidden or if it is going to be an area expanded you can also specify the area expanded by setting the expanded as true something like that so this is our some of the cool thing that you can specify over here so once this is done you can see that i have identified the control using this particular option well i can move this whole code to like one single line instead of having them in multiple different lines something like this now you can see that this code is more readable for us and the same thing I can do with the uh, username as well. But instead of specifying that as the text box and then identifying it, I can use what is called as get by label method. And because this is going to be a label, I don't have to specify the ID there. And the same thing I can do it for the text password as well, something like this. And then I need to identify by clicking the BTN login button. But before I even do that, let me first go to the application. So I'm going to open my Chrome browser here. And now I'm going to hit this login button. And you can see that this is a login button. So if I do an inspect over here, you can see that this is going to be an input type, which is of submit over here right so this we know that this is going to be a button type because it's going to be an input operation which is going to perform a click operation for me so now for this i can actually specify get by role and over here i'm going to be specifying area role dot button so i can specify that over here and then i can specify the new get by role option name as login something like this and similarly i can do the exact same thing for our employee list something like this so now you can see that our code is fully transformed to the latest and the greatest of this particular identification mechanism because it is going to identify things much much easily over here and now if i want to use this particular code i actually have to see where we have used this particular code and i think we have not used login page anywhere i think we have only used this login page upgraded everywhere so we can probably use or change the identification that we have did over here so i'm just going to uh, copy all the locators from here i'm going to copy them and i'm going to change it here something like this and i can get rid of them cool so it's all transformed right now to the latest of this particular operation so i'm going to save this and let's try to run this code and see how it actually works so i'm just going to go to our playwright basics and i think we have executed the code in the test with page object model over here so let's try to run this code and see if that works so you can see that the browser has opened and it is performing the intended operation pretty much like how we expected it to happen. So the, you can see that the test has got passed as well. So this is how we can actually work with the new way of identifying the control using the area support in Playwright. Starting our next lecture, we are going to see how we can write this code even further in even more complex scenarios, as well as what is the better way to identify the control using Playwright in much sophisticated fashion.